Good day, everyone. I pray for you today that you understand and know that the Father has made a promise to you. And the Father keeps his promises. In Kings, you'll find these words, and he who keeps his promises is faithful. Not one that he gave to Moses and others has ever failed. Promises. Often, you and I have been promised things, and suddenly we come up empty. Where is that thing you promised? You said you would. I took you at your word. You promised. You swore an oath. You cursed and said. We go back and forth on that. And so we always wonder, when someone makes a promise to us, is it going to be fulfilled? Now, in the financial world, we deal with that. In the political world, we deal with that. In our everyday social life, we deal with that. Are those promises going to be fulfilled? Now, some of them are big promises, dreams. And we like dreams. Dream big. Yes, have vision. Yes, dream. Others are small things. I'll be on time. I will take you. We will do this together. I will make this happen for you. We get those promises all the time. And again, sometimes we're left wondering, is this actually going to happen? Or we feel the feelings of failure. It did not happen. So now we're angry. We're frustrated. We're not quite sure what to do. So we live out our anger. We live out our frustration. Often we don't let people know that, you know, you disappointed me. And so in that, we just bear in ourselves those hurts. God has made promises to us, as I opened, that not one of God's promises has ever failed. We know that. We live that. But why the whole issue of promises? Because today and tomorrow, we're going to talk about the promises of God. What God has promised you, what God has promised me. And so today we're looking at Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7, 8, and 9. Because what God has done is God made a promise. And remember, a promise requires two people. And in making that promise, God was very serious about his promise. He says this, For the first covenant had been faultless, that is the covenant God made with Israel, there would be no occasion sought for a second. But finding fault with them, he says, Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. Years ago, one of my young men at Mission High says to me, Jerry, I said, yeah. Does God get angry with people? I'm trying to make sure that I'm helping this young man grow and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you know, no, I don't think so. Knowing full well, that was not the correct answer. He came back the next day and said, do you know what the Bible says? says God was angry with Moses and God was angry with the nation of Israel. That's how you get to this line. I did not care for them, says the Lord. What's the idea there? Because the covenant was broken on our side. We broke the covenant. God made the covenant. He says, I made this with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, that I would be their God. I would guide them. I would lead them. I take them into the land of milk and honey. Now, you remember when the, when the spies went out, they came back with all of this stuff and said, yeah, God's land is full of milk and honey. We can go there. But the naysayers, oh gosh, showed up. And the naysayers showed up and prevailed. And so that was the beginning I believe, of the breaking of the covenant on our side. And then God says, they did not continue in my covenant. The idea is that they did not walk in my ways. They did not trust me. Understand the language there. The day when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, God directed, God provided, God led. 
but you get into you get into the promised land now suddenly you do what you want to do because what happens is when we get into the promised land when we start living on our own not following the father's ways we do what we want to do we follow our flesh we forget the slavery we were in he gives them again this line led them out of egypt what happens there because remember there is rebellion in the desert there's rebellion in the promised land there's rebellion what's the idea behind rebellion that you remember things the way they were and you want them that way and they forgot that when they were in egypt they were in slavery and as that generation dies off the next generation moves a little further away from the father doing the same thing because they want to do their own thing, living in their own rebellion. So the father says, I didn't care for them. But go back up to verse 7. Here it is. If the first covenant had been faultless, there'd be no occasion sought for a second. Verse 8. Finding fault with them, that is Israel. He says, behold, days are coming when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Why a new covenant? Because the old one failed. It failed because God provided. God gave. And we rejected. God blessed. And we said no. God showed up and said, oh, that's just a nice special effect today. Understand. As we read the Old Testament, we see Israel moving further and further away from the Father. We see him using different ways. I'm going to use Babylon. Go ahead. It's okay. Jeremiah and other prophets say, pay attention to what God is doing. No, we don't need to do that. We got this. And so we keep breaking the covenant, moving further and further away from the Father. And the Father says, I need to make a new covenant. Now, why would God go and make a new covenant? He knows that we're truculent, recalcitrant, stiff-necked people. We're rebellious. All of those words you want to add there. Why would he do that? He wants to make a new covenant because he loves you and he loves me. He wants us to understand and know the love that he has for us. He wants us to understand that he wants us to be with him, walk with him, live with and for him. In the old covenant, there was a sacrifice every day. Once a year, there was a day of atonement. There was a shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins. And the father says, yes, I forgive your sins. I want you to know and walk with me. There was the giving of the law. And all the law was supposed to do, all the sacrifices were supposed to do, was to point people to God. But we rebelled. We continued to rebel. Even though there's the day of atonement, even though the scapegoat runs out into the wilderness, removing our sins away from us, we continued in that vein. Why? Because we didn't continue in his covenant, knowing him, walking with him. So God made a promise. I'm going to give a new covenant. Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect, effect a new covenant with the house of Israel, the house of Judah. Remember, not one of God's promises have failed. What does Hebrews tell, tell us earlier? God cannot, will not, does not lie. The new covenant is promised. God is going to bring us the new covenant. Mercy. Father, we thank you. The Lord, we have the gift of 2020 hindsight. The Lord, we can see what happened with Israel. We can see what happened there, Lord, even in the days when Jesus came. Lord, forgive our predecessors. Lord, thank you for the promise that you were going to make a new covenant. Thank you for the new covenant. The Lord, we now get to live with it and in it. These things, Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.